Hey YouTube, how's it going? Thought today I would do an unboxing video of a new canister filter I recently purchased from my, well actually from work. Um, now, <laughs> I don't think I've ever done a video like this. I think this is the first time I've ever done an unboxing video when it comes to any kind of supplies. So bear with me when it comes to explaining anything. Uh, one of the bigger reasons that I did buy this is because one, there's not a whole lot of reviews on the filter itself. Um, ZooMed is very well known for the reptile supplies, which is why you can also find the same exact filter as a, um, I think they sell it as like a turtle canister filter or whatever for a 50 gallon. Um, the big reason that I got it for sure was because um, it was clearanced already for about $70. And on top of that, I got 25% off with a um, employee discount and 25% off with a dry goods discount which was like we have like an aquatic sale or whatever at Petco right now so um, I got a pretty good price it was like a hundred and twenty or hundred and thirty dollar canister filter for about thirty bucks so not half bad I figure why not we'll try it out now I'm going to attach this to the 30 gallon Tiger Watchman tank just to see how it does um, so first things first looking at the box itself it's kind of a nice presentation. It does really scream more of a <laughs> a reptile kind of a deal, I guess. I never really look at the at the filter design itself right off the box and go, gee, that's something I would have on a large saltwater fish tank. But um, it does say right on the front, freshwater saltwater fish tanks. So um, opening it up, looking at the filter itself, I guess I kind of have some complaints about it because like I said it's not really a kind of filter that you look at and go gee I really want to have that on my aquarium um, so with that said it's very very slim let's see if we can get a better view here um, it's a very slim design it's not you know the usual canister is going to be more of a box or a rectangle shape um, so I guess it's kind of a pet peeve with it um, it does really, really help out for me, um, specifically because I'm putting it into a smaller space where there's not a whole lot of room for it. Um, so in that aspect, it'll work out wonderfully. Now, if you take a look, you've got the intakes, you've got the out, you've got the, okay, you've got the in and you've got the out, not just the outtakes or the intakes. Um, so this is going to be where the line goes in, where the water is entering, and this is where it's going to be exiting. Um, back here, you have a little, um, uh, was it a cap, so that way you can fill up the canister filter and get it primed, um, so that way you don't have to worry about trying to prime it yourself, I guess. There we go. Simple twist off. There's the cap for that. And, so we'll give it the idea. So yeah, you just fill it. So this is rated to do about 265 gallons an hour. So the 50 gallon is supposed to do about 200 or 200 gallons an hour. So, all right. So taking a look at it, God, it's kind of a pain in the back. So at least it's kind of secure. I'll give it that much. All right. So we've got the safety locks on either side, and this is the first. <laughs> This is the first time for me when it comes to this filter, so once again, bear with me. All right. So the whole top comes off. Um, it's got a good weight to it, I'll say that much. The plastic definitely doesn't feel like it's very cheaply made. Um, I know I'm using a Sun Sun canister filter for the 150 gallon. It feels a whole lot thinner than this, so this is actually it feels like a decent canister filter, like it could really take a beating. Not that I recommend it, but just feels that way. Um, one of the big reasons that I really did like the filter is because it seems to have a whole lot of space for media, um, and it's included with a whole lot of media. So we've got this setter sponge, which is a darn good size sponge. Plenty of biological filtration right there. Got a, another over here on the side. And then I believe inside of the box came a few, yep, we've got some bio rings, some ceramic rings for more bio filtration. So we've got two bags of that actually to go over in the side. So plenty of biological filtration. I mean, I don't see any any issues with that. Um, sorry, I've got my phone going off. 
Uh, and honestly, I think that's part of the reason why, why it really kind of stuck out to me. It, was just, it seemed like a really, really large area for a lot of biological filtration. So um, hopefully it actually works out. I wouldn't see why it wouldn't work out. Um, I've got the tubing, which it looks like it's already pre-cut for you. You've got two separate pieces. So I guess that'd be a pain in the back if you're looking for something that's going to be a little bit longer depending on where your aquarium is. Um, mine is going to be close to the ground so I don't have to worry about it, but uh, that'd be a flaw right then and there. You're going to have to find some tubing. This is probably about, oh gosh, three feet maybe, a little over three feet worth of tubing. So definitely think about that. You'd have to have more added um, to it. Looks like it's just, was it five eighths I believe? Um, I've actually got a third bag of rings. Probably because it's a 75, I think the 50 is the one that only has the two bags. Alright, we've got all the miscellaneous parts we're going to need for it. Looks like for the intake. What else we've got? We've got the spray bar. We've got a miscellaneous hose. <laughs> or a tube. I see instructions, and then we've got carbon packs, which I don't know if I'm going to use. I'm still debating that. Anyone who knows my, my uh, previous videos, I don't do a whole lot of carbon. Um, I've never really used a whole lot of carbon. I'm more main, mainly just biological or um, more natural kind of biological bacteria kind of idea. So I don't use a whole lot of chemical stuff, but um, that is that, I guess. That's the unboxing. What I'm going to do is get it all put together so that way we make it actually look presentable and what it would actually look like when it was all ready. And then I will uh, resume the video when I actually have it all set up. So I will show you guys that and hopefully a few. All right, I've got everything all settled, assembled and put together. Um, just thought I'd show you. This is actually where you're going to be adding the water to uh, kind of prime it. So I filled it up a majority of the way from the sink and then the rest of it was just used with the bottle of water. So. Um, I didn't fill it all the way, but a fair amount of the way. Hopefully the pump should be able to fill up the rest. And then you want to make sure that when the cap goes back on, you twist it so that way it's straight on. It should lock in place. You're going to notice it's going to be completely straight with the rest of the filter. So um, that's one of the big keys. Something I didn't notice before or point out, it's got a little handle in the middle of it. Um, something easier to kind of pull out the top or even carry it around if you have to. Um, so now we're going to get a closer look. I'm going to bring you guys actually up and out of the stand. Um, so far, I guess, I don't have a whole lot of complaints with it. Um, it seems to have a whole heck of a lot of room and a whole heck of a lot of uh, media in it. I did throw the carbon pads in there or the carbon bags in there. I rinsed through those um, just because they were there, I guess. Um, while I don't really use them and I never probably will unless it's an instance like this where it's already there, why not? Um, so you've got all the ceramic media over here. On the other side you've got your sponge in the, media, in the middle, you got more sponge over here for, mechanic, for your mechanical filtration, and then you've got uh, the carbon pads down at the bottom. Um, it kind of seems like jamming a whole lot into one little filter. While it's a lot of space for a different kind of bacteria to grow, to have more of a biological kind of filtration to it, uh, it does seem kind of just loosely, here we'll throw something in there to kind of fill the space. Um, with that said, it's very easy to unclamp and clamp. Um, I noticed that uh, a lot of issues with the fluval filters is that it's very hard to get the cover off and back on. It's more of a struggle. Um, but I didn't have that issue with this, I guess. Um, you've got the... We got the little screws or the fasteners for the airline, or not the airline, for the tubing, for the hosing, um, is actually detachable. Um, they come in four separate pieces, so you have to put those back on manually. It's not something that's actually attached to the filter itself. It's It, it can come off. Um, I wasn't a big fan about that, I guess, but it is what it is. Um, this is where it's going to be the intake. It's just about, what do you got, three, four different pieces put together. You've got the bottom screen was a separate piece. This larger tube to connect to that bottom screen was a separate piece. You've got this see-through tube to pull up the water. And then you've got what it's going to hang on the um, hang on the back of it. So it also gives you an option to have the max flow or the minimum flow into the filter as well. So And it fastens right back onto the hosing. It goes all the way to the filter. And then you've got your output, which 
Um, you, it comes with a different kind or a few different kind of suction cups. I only used one on the intake. I used two on the out or the output just because I don't know. It seems like it's going to have a whole lot more of a hold. Um, <laughs> downside is, which I can already tell you, I do not trust these suction cups. There is an example right there. I've got the guy right here, and he's barely hanging in there. He's falling off, and that one already fell off. So um, it doesn't look like the most sturdy suction cup, and I doubt it is, but we'll see how it goes, I guess, when I get it all moving. So, um, But otherwise, that's really about it. I, I guess it all depends on how it looks and how it runs. So um, I'm going to get it all plugged in and set up on the tank, and uh, we'll take a look at it in just a minute. All right, so I finally got it plugged in and running. Um, honestly, it seems to do a pretty good job. Um, like I said before, it's a very sturdy kind of build to it, I guess. Um, I didn't notice any issues upon startup. I mean, obviously with the depth of the tank and how the airline or the um, hosing is kind of positioned, it's more of a difficulty trying to get it uh, primed and started than most would have, as usually you have this a little bit... Yeah, there you go, see? Usually you want to have this a little bit lower down uh, below your tank so that way it's a little bit easier for the pump to be able to get the water through and in and back out. So um, I just have it weirdly set up as I do with the um, canister filter for the 150 gallon as well. So I'll have to modify that as time goes on. But uh, it moves around a lot of water, a fair amount of water. Um, it seems to do a pretty good job. Um, you can even see right here with the air bubbles that are kind of going around. Um, that are being kicked up by the filter. It's doing pretty well at uh, keeping everything circulated. So um, a problem I had with this tank was everything was too still. We were growing a whole lot of LG in the tank in general. So uh, this is the Tiger Watchman tank. I plan on doing more with it, but um, I just haven't had the uh, time, and I don't have a whole lot of live rock in there. So I'll be picking up some live rock tomorrow, but I wanted to upgrade the filtration. So right now I've just got a hang in the back filter which is going to stay there until uh, things get all adjusted with the new filter so you never want to take off an old filter and replace it with a new filter without any bacteria to supply it or back it up or anything like that so um, but in a few weeks hopefully we'll be able to take off that filter and replace it with this canister so um, I am very pleased to say that it is actually very quiet uh, there's not really a whole lot of noise you can hear a slight hum which is from the um, pump itself but I am extremely happy with as quiet as it is so it's a lot quieter than the dripping of that hang on the back filter that's for sure but then again it's kind of a pain in the back to be able to keep that filter um, with how it is it's a specific type of filter and with this aquarium frame it's a um, uh, slate bottom or a metal frame aquarium is a little bit more of a different build than your average glass aquarium so but, alright, that is the review and unboxing of the Macro 75. Um, I'll have to do an update on it as the um, tank progresses, I guess, uh, just to show what it has done over the past, you know, how many weeks or months, um, if it even lasts that long, of course. So I'll definitely keep you guys updated. Uh, like I said, seems to do pretty good, or seems like a pretty good idea. It's kind of like a side, kind of a backup idea if you need any extra room for bacteria or keeping anything. Obviously, you can pack this thing with whatever kind of media you want, ceramic cubes, bio balls, uh, filter mesh, whatever you want. It seems to do uh, a pretty good job with all the open space it does have. So uh, if you can find it on sale, by all means, go for it. But I honestly don't think it's a must-have product. Uh, I'd much rather go for something that's going to be a little bit more official looking, but for something that kind of sticks out the way doesn't take up a whole lot of space and contains a whole lot of space i highly recommend it so but that is the zoom med macro 75 hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you all next time